at least 10 migrants have been rescued off the southern Italian coast while trying to swim for shore. They jumped from a rescue ship, driven to desperation after three weeks stranded at sea at the mercy of the elements and political maneuverings in Rome. Rescued people should not be used as hostages for the purpose of political point scoring. Uh, the situation right now is regrettable and should have never come to this. A standoff with anti-immigration interior minister Matteo Salvini has led to the resignation of Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte. Salvini, the leader of the League Party, left an alliance with the Five Star Movement over disagreements on what to do with the Spanish-run migrant ship, the Open Arms. Salvini's blocked it from docking at the southern island of Lampedusa. These are the reasons that lead me to brand as extremely irresponsible the decision to start this government crisis. In this way, I must say that the interior minister has shown he is acting out of personal and party interests. Salvini's move follows a rise in his party's popularity. In his bid to become prime minister, he's promising tax cuts and spending hikes. The aim is to boost an economy that grew just 0.1% in the second quarter. But his plan threatens to run up the state's debt-to-GDP ratio, which is already the Eurozone's second highest at 132%. It could also push the government's budget deficit past an EU limit of 2% of GDP. Brussels has said that would trigger sanctions on Rome. I would do everything that I did again, everything, with the great strength of being a free man. Therefore, it means that I'm not afraid of the judgment of the Italians. President Sergio Mattarella will meet with parties to see if any of them can form a new coalition. Or he could call for elections in October, leaving the Eurozone's third largest economy in choppy waters. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, let's get more on this now with Emanuele Bracco in Milan. He's a senior lecturer in economics at Lancaster University in the UK and an associate professor of economics at the University of Verona. Welcome back to Money Talks, Emanuele. Well, the Italian government, as we know, was already in disarray before Conte announced he was quitting. What does his departure mean now? Well, I think that while well, the government probably has the hours counted, I think in an hour or so, the Prime Minister will resign. Uh, and then there's a very complicated phase of uh, bargaining and, and the decision to be made by the Italian political parties. And I think their minds are not up yet. Uh, as it seems now, it's more likely to be an institutional government grand coalition with the left-wing Democratic Party and the fi populist five-star movement together, mainly to do a budget bill and to avoid elections that these two parties really do not want to have. But it's the situation is very unstable. A lot will depend on the preferences of the president of the republic, which are generally very much aligned with the, with the European Union and the Euro bureaucrat uh, will of keeping Italy stable and having everything rolling through smoothly. But, but uh, the, there's, there's a lot of confusion and a lot of instability also with the, for the Italian standards, let's say. Yes. Now, Prime Minister Conte uh, has pushed back against this idea of snap elections. Matteo Salvini, his deputy and the leader of the far-right League party, actually wants snap elections, doesn't he, after he uh, left the ruling coalition. Do you think we'll see them, I even though the Prime Minister doesn't want them? I, I think they are unlikely. Um, they are unlikely because uh, the, they're still possible, but they're unlikely because the president of the republic doesn't want them because that would be to put too much risk uh, on Italy's debt and on its position with respect to the euro, because Italy must pass, by, by, by constitution, Italy must, must pass a budget bill by the end of the year, and there may not be the time to do that if you have snap elections now. Also, the two uh, main parties, in, well, two big parties in parliament now are Five Star Movement, uh, who are leaving the government, uh, and uh, the Democratic Party. And both of them have very large power in parliament, but are faring very badly in the poll. Uh, so this means that these two parties have a good advantage in letting things tip through a bit longer and maybe do an interim government with some uh, uh, institutional technocratic figurehead that can put up a budget bill for a bit. Uh, for a bit. 
and then delay elections. Uh, also because Matteo Salvini wants election very, very much because he has a, he's polling at 35 to 40 percent, a percentage that are never, you know, unimaginable even just a few years ago. So it's trying to cash in. So I think electoral incentives are really driving most of most of the most of the decisions now. Like very petty electoral incentives are all over the place. Uh, also, intra-party wars are driving this. I mean, the the Democratic Party on the left uh, is mainly uh, has MPs mainly from a more centrist uh, uh, political makeup. Uh, and the new, the new and I think these are more likely to want to stay in, in, in the parliament and yeah. delay elections. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you about this issue of the budget? Because uh, as we know, uh, Italy was facing the prospect of uh, billions of dollars in fines from the EU because it defied the budget deficit target. Matteo Salvini and Luigi Di Maio actually wanted to uh, implement huge, big spending measures on social services and the like. Do you think we'll see a budget passed that will both please those parties as well as Brussels? Oof, um, I, I think it's now very unlikely that these two parties will, will sign, the, sign the budget and will write the budgets. Uh, I think Lega Nord doesn't want to snap elections, so will not be in the next government unless there's snap elections. Um, the, the, the Legan, both Lega Nord and Five Star Movement are playing the fine line of being really on the line with respect to the EU so that they can show off to their voters that they are fighting to, against these Euro bureaucrats and the city budget rules of the Euro, so they say. Uh, but in the, at the same time, they want to comply by them because they, they don't want Italy to go in default and so on. So I think that uh, it, it, it's likely that possibly this a new government will do uh, will try to do a budget mm. uh, which mm. will uh, will surely will comply to the with EU rules so everyone will be safe I'm not sure it will be a good budget because it would be if it will be a democratic party plus five star movement coalition plus some others because they don't really have a majority in parliament it would be an odd coalition that it would be weird with very yes. little political yes. um, political will and a cohesion so I'm not very optimistic on how good this, this budget will be, but it will comply by the master's rule. Well, surely there's going to be a lot of horse trading in the days and weeks ahead. Emanuele Bracco, thank you again for your analysis.